online spot testing. So the cable is in place, is in service. Uh, we want to perform a test to let's see if uh, during uh, is a normal life we can detect some defect coming from the cables and in case to put in place some solution. So we have to consider that the spot testing is like a picture of the HV cable condition. There are several uh, good points. We have the system working in the real working condition. So we have voltage, we have current, we have aging, everything is in there. We don't need any out of service. It's a very fast test because we can test three, three accessories in less than one hour, for example, if you have a skilled operator in a site. But the only bad part is that we are just picking up a frame of the full lifetime of the asset. It's just a frame of the second. So it is good to make it, it's easy to make, it's cheap, but uh, we are losing uh, most of the asset lifetime and uh, we work in a noisy environment, uh, especially in uh, outdoor substation. We can have many, many disturbances coming from the grid and uh, some skills are required in order to identify properly the PD sources in such condition. So, as I told you, in uh, PD spot testing, we have external disturbances, uh, unexpected circuit layouts, uh, cross talk. Uh, is not uh, comparable with offline, uh, for example, VLF testing that is very uh, popular right now in medium voltage cable and is uh, fully automate, automa automatic testing. Basically, you only have to connect the instrument and uh, the voltage generator together with the detection units, they can uh, efficiently PD localization. In online, uh, you need some experience. Uh, we have two different solutions for, uh, for the spot testing. In one case, uh, the complete service, we cover all the PD aspects from the preparation of the test to the PD report. So everything will be prepared and done by skilled operators that do this job uh, most of the time. And those are quite experienced in the, very experienced in the matter. Second solution is the alpha. So it's a cheaper solution. You buy this alpha unit, you perform the test on your own by following the instruction given by the alpha unit, and the data analysis is then performed by uh, a specialist. It's cheaper, uh, customer takes care of the field activities, can be also easier for safety and so on, and it's a more flexible solution. The permanent sensor. Permanent sensor can be a very good choice to be done when installing a new asset. Mm, especially why? Because, uh, there is an investment, it's not just uh, a waste of money. Basically, we will have many advantages. We have the possibility to install the sensor in the most sensitive position, in the best position possible. We have a standard uh, testing condition if you want to compare data from different uh, sessions, one from 2008 uh, with one 2021, for example, 2020. In some cases, we have data more than uh, 10 years old, and we keep having new data on the same sensor in 10 years, and we can compare easily the readings. It's safer because uh, the installation of the sensor is made with all the possible precaution. The hardware is made to let's say, have a safer testing, to put the testing engineer in, safety condition, in the safer condition. And it is also the first step if you want to upgrade the permanent sensor to a permanent monitoring system. So we already have the sensor side. Obviously, you need uh, some uh, resources to allocate to this matter. On uh, termination, we can place a uh, high frequency current transformer. In this case, we have uh, a schematic drawing on the left and related picture on the right, where you can see the HFCT placed in the link box of the single end cable termination. In the joints, we can also have uh, the installation of HFCT. They should be installed on the single core side of the bonding cable next to the joint. And the signal can be derivated outside with a dedicated box. 
This is one case of one of our customers where you can see in the HFCT is told in the uh, single uh, single conductor um, bonding key. If we have embedded pin sensor, it's an even, even better solution because it's the most sensitive uh, sensitive uh, sensor we can have. We need uh, to some precaution to understand how to connect uh, our uh, testing equipment to the unit, but uh, that will give a very good uh, measuring uh, uh, result. Last, uh, last part of the HV cable uh, PD pointer from the PD from the partial charge point of view. This is the last part. The highest solution we can provide to the customer is the permanent monitoring. Why we should install uh, permanent monitoring? The asset uh, works in uh, real working condition all the time. We have a 24 7 online PD assessment. We have also ready to use the testing hardware if we want to perform a manual spot measurement. Suppose that we want to investigate a little bit more one alarm. We already have everything in place. We just need to connect one laptop and to connect to the instrument. We can have a very good trend evaluation and we have automatic alarms. We can integrate the partial discharge monitoring with other systems. Uh, for instance, we have something uh, uh, with cables uh, that also goes with infrared, uh, with the uh, movement sensor of the cable. There are many things that can be integrated in the same, but in the end, it's a bigger investment for the customer. We have to, let's say, I mean, as from my personal point of view, we have to underline the, pros the positive aspect that the permanent monitoring gives and to make understand the importance of such investment. For the, for the customer. Permanent PD monitoring component, components, we have the sensor, so where the analog signal is picked up from our asset. We have the PD apps, where the acquisition unit takes the analog signal and makes it digital. We have the power and fiber optic network. The power is obviously required to energize the permanent monitoring, and the fiber optic network takes the digital signal from the acquisition unit and brings it to the central server. In the central server, this is another component of the, of the PDM. We have all the data elaboration, and we can have a connectivity point to internet, uh, local SCADA, and so on. We can also include the third part sensor and uh, also other data managed together with the PD. Here we have an example of the HV cable global monitoring. We have uh, DAS, DTS, uh, vibration sensor, gas sensor, video camera infrared position sensor, input modules. We can uh, make both HMI integration and data import to have everything in our T-SCADA, which is the TKIP SCADA system. So again, typical example with the global monitoring, 24-7 PD monitoring, DTS and EAS. One user interface for all the condition data is web-based uh, Platform, so you can exceed also from your laptop just by connecting to the same network. We have a multi-standard protocol available, OPC UI, ESC 61850, DMP3, and Modbus, in order to be uh, linked with the existing uh, communication uh, system or SCADAS. The last two slides are about uh, some case studies, some real experience case study picked up by the Kim Service Department on the field and uh, brought here for some, let's say, overview of what can be the condition, the situation you have on site and what you have to look for and what will be the result of the affected asset. The first case study is an offline PD commissioning. The test was sequential. The accessories were outdoor and JS termination. It was a very short cable. This is the outdoor side. So there is a picture then of the GIS side. The sensor used were high frequency carbon transformer clamped, so not permanently stalled. The asset is a 150 kV voltage cable, very short, and it's a cross-link polyethylene. Obviously, here we have a torque termination sensor and GIS termination sensor. We have started the test, and uh, when the RTS was injected 90 kV face to ground voltage, 
it was a strange signal we could see from the entire PRPD. You can see this uh, cluster of points, very high, but uh, not so many, with a quite low repetition rate, that it was following a little bit the applied voltage signal. This is the time frequency classification map that is able to select a different cluster of points and to visualize them one by one in the PRPD. The red cluster of point was the PD that was, let's say, triggering our attention as an interface PD, as kind of surface partial discharge. We have uh, informed the RTS uh, operator that uh, that case was also the, was, let's say, was uh, in charge of the world testing that we were able to see that uh, PD. He said, OK, let's try to increase a little bit the voltage to see if there is an increase of the PD as well. At 100 kV, the both amplitude and repetition rate of the PD were even more evident. So, short briefing, uh, there is a PD in that termination, just interrupted, and uh, replacement of the JS termination. Burning traces were found uh, on the stress cone uh, of the termination, so it was a PD activity, the, a PD activity detected during the commissioning. The test was uh, repeated again after the replacement of the termination. The situation was very good. There were not signals from the PD source anymore. This is another uh, case studies that, in my opinion, is uh, was very important to share uh, in order to make uh, everyone aware that even uh, very big uh, jobs uh, can be very big circuits can be tested with partial discharge with uh, some effort in a very efficient way. It was a very long uh, 230 kV cable, 18.3 kilometer. We had, it was a double circuit, so we had uh, 12 outdoor termination and 210 joints. If I'm not wrong, uh, six, yes, it was uh, one of the longest uh, cable in that uh, utility. Okay. It was equipped with a permanent sensor with permanent uh, HFCT and low frequency current transformer for the synchronization purposes. 30, 35 joints each circuit and two termination, and uh, the test could be carried out face by face only because of this very long cable length. If we want to go sequential in this kind of test, then we have so we need to move uh, so many times. Uh, and uh, we have to perform so many shots to cover the full length. Every activity repeated for the number of the phases that we have, because we can inject the voltage on one phase only. The solution that was found together with the owner of the cable, the utility, was to install a permanent sensor and to make them available for a simultaneous testing in order to have a simultaneous test during the commissioning and uh, an infrastructure that will be useful for the uh, future installation, future testing session. So, during the cable installation, there was a pit dedicated to the PD testing where we have fiber optic uh, signals cables, PD, PD derivation box from the two different circuits, so three channels here and three channels here. There was room enough to install a car battery and the PD temporary app. Now, this was the six channels installation with all fiber optic necessary to perform during the test. On this uh, schedule, we can see what was the, um, the activities done day by day. Look, it's just a six days session, so we had we had, uh, as per the scheduled activities, two days of PD apps installation and uh, troubleshooting. We had to use also the, mo the morning of the first third day to fix some problems with the fiber optic. And then we were able to test the, the six phases in less than two days when everything was set. So it was a big uh, let's say, relief for the utility to perform this huge job without interrupting the traffic for so much time and uh, performing the test in a very easy and straightforward way. We had six engineers sitting uh, connected to the, with the fiber optic network toward the acquisition points 
and the job was uh, very smooth in the end. Another uh, long circuit simultaneous PD test was an offline commissioning test, uh, GIS termination, both sides and, jo and joints in the middle. We were using HFCTs. The cable length was 21 kilometers. So in this case, we had a permanent monitoring system installed and we were taking advantage of the hardware of the permanent monitoring to perform the offline spot testing at uh, very, very low end. In this case, it was possible to see a very small PD activity in one joint, 2 millivolt, at 106 kV, 0.8 uh, rate of voltage. We triggered the attention of the, cast of the testing team on this activity. As is a normal procedure, they try to increase to validate that it was real PD without uh, having uh, the joint failure. So just by increasing at 132 kV face to ground, it was, op op it was uh, possible to see the entire PD pattern and the pulse shape was slightly higher, even if it was a uh, very small amplitude in the end. We are talking about a peak of four millivolts. We have interrupted the test and the joint was replaced. After the uh, job replacement, you can see that we were triggering our noise at less than one millivolt and no PD signal could be seen. So, first of all, I would like to thank you for your time. I hope uh, I was able to teach you something that you didn't know and to introduce you to the high voltage cable partial discharge test. It's quite, uh, let's say, small topic globally, but uh, it's very interesting and uh, as a company has a very big experience in high voltage cable testing. And, uh, our products, both uh, sensor acquisition unit and permanent monitoring system, can be a very good tool in terms of condition maintenance decision and asset management. If you have further questions, please contact me directly at my email address that you can find here, lorenzo.paschini at altanavagroup.com. I hope uh, you have enjoyed the webinar and I thank you for your time and your attention. Hope to see you soon and goodbye.